So, so with that said, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and talk about a conference that we uh, we really enjoy betting on, and that would be the Sun Belt. They have decided that they are going to go ahead with a full twelve game schedule. They can start on Labor Day weekend. Non conference games could theoretically be scheduled in week zero. Um, a number of non-conference games involving some belt schools have already been canceled as power conferences move to either conference only or plus one schedules. It, the conference championship game is still supposed to be December 5th, but that can be adjusted because it is hosted on site on campus. So it, they're monitoring it, it. So here's the here's the, the statement from them. The Sun Belt Conference will continue to monitor health trends across our communities. Sun Belt presidents and chancellors, athletic directors, the COVID-19 advisory panel, and medical advisors will continue to review data to ensure a safe return to activities and competition. Our data review will cross seven states and 12 counties and include, among other things, infection rates, hospitalization rates, local health directives, advancements in COVID-19 testing, and campus department and team health trends. So they have decided, you know what? Let's give it a shot. Like, we're, we're going without Power Fives anyway, so let's just have at it and see exactly what we can do. And so, you know, I'm a... Uh, I wonder how soon they're going to have a schedule up. That's what I'm curious about. Because they, they have to... They can't have 12-game schedules unless they're going to play each other more than once without the cooperation of other conferences. Well, yeah, they're, they're going to have to have AAC, Mountain West, Conference USA... Somebody. Something you know, we someone we talked earlier about Conference USA and the Sun Belt doing some kind of a, a deal to make it one gigantic conference so everything could be a right. little more regionalized. It would not surprise me to see them go ahead and do something like this, not where they all become one conference, but hey, we we want to be able to fill out twelve games. We want to fill twelve games. They want to fill twelve games. Yeah, yeah. we so we're both going to agree. We're going to start on a normal time frame. And we'll play our conference games, and all of the interconference will just be within one another. That makes yeah. sense. The uh, it, the Sun Belt has got ten teams, and they have two divisions with five teams each. So your division, yeah. you've only got four division games, and then you yeah. play four from the other side. So, I mean, even if they play everybody from the other side, they still need two opponents. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, you're no, right. They still need three opponents. Yeah, you would still need three to be able to get to twelve. Yeah. Uh, now tell me this: why? Tell me what you think the reasoning is behind them wanting to make sure that they get to 12 games. Do you think it's just inventory to make sure that their television money comes yeah, through? Yeah, they need money. They're going to need, because well, they're losing all the pay for wins. Yeah. So they, they need so the only way get. to get that is, is ESPN is going to come up with some dough for, for those Tuesday night games and those Wednesday night games because that's inventory they're used to having. And now yeah. they're not. That is, uh, that's 100% true. Um, and that, so if you, if you get out in front of this and you say we're playing then, and, and for some reason, other conferences choose not to, you're going to, you're going to have a lot of eyes on your schools. Yeah. You're, you're definitely right about that. Especially, I mean, ESPN right now in, in Fox and whoever else, uh, there's nothing stopping the Sun Belt from being able to work out some kind of a deal for the right. early games. Right. What because, if, what if, what if you're, what if you're NBC sports? And and you don't you don't really have anybody in college football that you're really putting on your network, uh, other than you know, Notre Dame uh, and and right but now. But that's not NBC Sports. That's NBC. Well, that's those NBC. Are two totally yeah. different things. Yeah, I mean yeah. those those are way different. All right, so that's a good point. I, I wonder I, does CBS I, I would Sports think that that would be somebody that I would say, hey, these guys are playing. Can we work a deal? Let's get a TV deal going. Yeah, they they could come out with something to uh, to be able to get a little more money. Uh, or, or or the CBS Sports Network. I mean, you've yeah. got a lot of a lot of these smaller sports channels that have their own sports twenty four hour networks. And man, they're filling them with junk right now. Yeah. Now, right now, that live sports are finally going on. NBC Sports is doing the hockey and all this, but that's just not going to be around forever. Now you you've definitely got it that won't, right. It won't be happening in October. We've uh, we've got a ton of independents that I say a ton. We've got five independents that all need a bunch of games. Notre Dame, of course, out of that mix, but of, that yeah, leaves five that, of yeah, them. Okay. So I'm I'm sure that they will be involved. I'm sure Conference USA will be involved. Uh, I don't know about the Mountain West because it's such a long distance to travel, but Conference USA is right there. So we'll we'll yes. see exactly what happens with that. Michael Fritz jumped in. Let me uh, let me clean up some of these in the comments. Uh, he said, delays just lead to overthinking. Let's just get this thing rolling and keep the flexibility. This year is going to be all about adapting, but you can't adapt if you don't start. That's yes. 100% right. 
Yeah, that's yeah. My, that's my what goals. we've been saying the whole time. I don't understand the pushback because you hurt yourself with all the ability to be flexible. Yes. You give all the flexibility away on the front end. Makes no sense at all. Yeah. No, you're uh, you're dead on about that. Uh, Typhon the Greek says, when will Texas and Texas A&M play again? Uh, it will uh, be a while. It'll be a long time. I'm not going to say never. It'll be a long time. Yeah. Wait, you got to get both sides to agree, and, and both of them hate each other right now, so... Well, I just think that's ridiculous, too. I think so, too. Yeah. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't play each other in a non-con game to open a season or something of that nature. Man, you know what kind of ratings that would pull? Oh, it'd be monster. And the problem is, is both of those schools don't need the money. Therein lies the issue is almost any other school in the country, if you just kept throwing money at them, you eventually you'd get to a number where they'd say, all right, I'll do it, you know? And because because we all have standards and until so we're paid enough to not have standards, well, yeah. Those two schools to get to that number is just tough. Uh, well, I, the person that would have to do it would probably be Jerry Jones, and he would have to do it, you know, at AT and T Stadium and make it a neutral site game. But and he's just not going to make, make that much money. He can't bring. I mean, it'd have to be a television contract. Yeah, to but pay it, him, you know, fifty but, but million Jerry dollars Jones, for one game or a hundred million dollars for one game. But it, it would have to be a neutral site game. It wouldn't be a hundred million, but oh, it would be you yeah. know a massive amount of money to make them even consider it. That's so, what I'm saying. But yeah. the problem is, is when you get to that number, you're tough. And while Jerry is a big Dallas guy, Jerry's not a not an A and M guy or a Texas. He didn't give a shit about those two schools. No, no, but he he does love money, so it, it would have to be at a point where he could actually make money off of the ordeal. Well, yeah, so, so he can't give it away. Exactly. But those two schools have to make enough to where it'd move the needle for them when you already have so much. Yeah. Man, it's really hard it's to tough. move the needle. Uh, Michael on Twitch said, uh, hey, the Greek, I really hope so. I would love to see A&M smack the Longhorns. <laughs> I forget that we've got an A&M guy and now a Texas guy in here. Uh, Kino Sims said, Gary, Chris, you're both right, but realistically, do you guys think college football is happening anywhere a la Florida and California? We're going into the fall, and things are clearly not improving. Um, I, I will tell you that. I think it's going to start. It is going to start because there is so much money at stake here. Yeah. Like They're going to do everything they can to yes. make it happen. And, and if it all falls apart, then it falls apart. But we will get started. Now, yes. what that means for the rest of the season, who knows? The SEC claims that they want to know as much about this as humanly possible. They want to be as prepared the as possible. The problem is, is we should have enough data points to know enough by now. Yes. This thing has should. throttled the world for nine months. Yeah. Yeah, you would I mean, at you would some think. point in time, how much data are you are you learning in the next couple of weeks? Yeah. No, you're that's, right. That's my problem is, is their arguments all fall short of, of basic logic and reasoning. Or it's just it was just sheer laziness. Michael said, "If they can play while the Power Five conferences are not, that'll be coverage they will never get again." A hundred, oh, a hundred percent. If they start right on time, and we only have one other Power Five conference playing, they are going to get all, all their games will get on TV because just television won't want the inventory. Oh yeah, uh, Kino said it's August fourth today. The fall semester literally begins in two weeks. I want to see college football, but not at the expense of the kids. It is wishful thinking to think that they uh, were going to have a full season, if one at all. I agree with you. We don't want to no, see anybody get hurt. No, uh, and we're not saying that we have to. We're going to. I'm not even expecting a full season. I'm just not. Yeah. I, I, agreed. Agreed. I would love to see it. I want to see yes. the start. I want to see what we can do and what the ramifications are. You're not going to be able to put these kids in a bubble. But there are kids that want to play, that understand the risks, that are going through and quarantining and doing all the stuff that they need to. In order, Chris and I have talked about this on this show dozens of times about how important structure and, and a set schedule and all that is for these younger athletes. You know, the, a lot of them are working to get to the NFL. They want to get to that payday, right? Not all of them are doing that. A lot of them are doing it for degrees and whatever else. But the deal is you can opt out. Every conference has come out and said you can opt out and you can keep your scholarship if you are too afraid to play. Like, if you don't want to take the risk, that is fine. I mean, we I didn't put it on the list, but Rashad Bateman, the star wide receiver from Minnesota, came out today and said, look, I want to play, but I don't think it's worth it. I'm going to sit out this season, and I'm going to go into yeah. the NFL draft next year. Totally within his right. right. And I don't blame anybody for doing it. I mean, the, Not at all. The, the kid from Virginia Tech did the same thing. Like, if you were going to be a high draft pick, 
why would you play? You know, Trevor Lawrence has already come out and said he is going to play. No matter what, Justin Fields said he's got no plans to sit out whatsoever. These kids want to play. That structure is just as important a part of their lives as anything else. So without that, you got to have something to work towards. Chris and I talk about this a lot. This this summer, for those that weren't on here and, and watching the show, without a vacation to, to work towards, without some kind of a break to get to, it almost feels like, what are you working for? Yeah. Like, yes, we all understand you're working to take care of your family, you're working to take da 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 but, but there's always like a light at the end of the tunnel. There's always a carrot that you're, that you're going after. With these kids, it's the same thing. Well, if you and don't have that. adults who've been through that. Yeah. God, when I was 20 something years old, if I didn't have something keeping me steady, there's no oh. telling the shit that I would have gotten into. Oh, it's trouble. And I have no athletic ability and, and nothing really to offer society at all at that point in time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, Michael jumps in. He said, Texas doesn't want to get smacked by a little brother. They can't, oh, my God. They can't lose the claim of being the best college team in Texas if they don't play anyone. Uh, then the Brown Yeti said, everyone should know by now that this is never going away. You just need to move on with life. Eh, well, I mean, that that's a one way to look at it, I guess. Uh, and then Michael said, the problem with data is when you have too much, it's just as dangerous as not enough. Way too many cooks in the kitchen. Agreed. At this point... Like, I think that's where we're at. Yeah, we're getting and, to that point. And the SEC and other conferences wanting to push back for more data, it, it it's a cop-out of some sort. But it just, their logic doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. You're right. And uh, Joseph Gomez said, I will be amazed if they can do all the testing needed, or are they just going to wait for symptoms to show up? Uh, who knows? I mean, I, I don't have a good answer for it. You know, we're no. just going to have to wait and see exactly what they decide to do, but... As it stands right now, we do know the Sun Belt is playing 10 games. We do know the SEC is delaying fall camps. Uh, Matt Miller said, ah, yes, the Aggies with their one championship in the last 90 years. Uh, we, we've got a, a full-blown Longhorns-Aggies brawl going on in the comments right now. You guys. 